Happy Sabbath. I want to believe that you've been enjoying the worship so far. Amen. Our good singing. Amen. Special thanks to our guest singers and also our home team. <laughs> no, I love it when our young men are singing. And Brother Henry came in and he first told us it's been 16 years. And he gave us a beautiful piece and he's like, wow, some of us, we have to wait 100 years to sing like that. <laughs> And there is hope because when we get to heaven, we will sing. Yes. There will be no excuse for us. Every one of us will sing. And I want to thank all those who have participated in the worship. You know, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. There's no other place that I want to be other than in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, for all our visitors, special greetings to you, and also greetings from our pastor, Pastor Baisa, uh, is in the other church this morning, or uh, we bring greetings to you. This is a church that welcomes visitors, so you are welcome anytime. But once you come in, like, first time, the second time, you are not a visitor. <laughs> but we still let you be in the first line when it's time for a podcast. <laughs> so, this morning... I've been praying that God will give us a message. Amen. And I know that message is going to be for somebody. Amen. I don't know who that somebody is. You know, for those of you that do not know, every quarter in this church, we have focus. We have things that we try to work on. And for this particular quarter, we are working on consecration and commitment. And that's why we've been talking a lot about the Holy Spirit. Because there will be no consecration, there will be no commitment if the Holy Spirit does not enable us. And that's what we continue to do for the next three months. But also we have what we call monthly focus. For the month of January, our focus is friendship evangelism. And when we get to the month of February, we will move to family life. And that's why next month, when we're talking of family life, the very first Sabbath, the preacher of that day will be Elder Talker. We will be talking about families. And also in the month of February, Elder Lee will also be preaching. It's also going to be related to family. The reason why I'm bringing this up is for, for us to understand that we have a church that is organized. Amen. So in line of friendship evangelism, the message today is titled what? The gift of... Oh, I'm going to have to wake some people up. The gift of... Friendship. Thank you very much. The gift of friendship is the title of today's message. And I just want to ask you to please pray for me. Because I don't want to waste your time. I want the time that we'll spend together here to be time that will be useful for you eternally. Amen. I want it to be a time that you will remember in two years, in five years, and say, thank God I went to church on January 26, 2013. Amen. So pray for me that that mission will be accomplished by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know. That prayer is so important that right now I want you to I want to ask you to please pray with me. Our Father who is in heaven, we want to go into your words. I want you to speak to us. Please break every barriers and let us be able to hear from you. We thank you for the for your ministration. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How many of us here have friends? I just want to check. Okay, that's good. You see, friendship is a very, very important part of our social life. You know, right from when you are so little, oh, you say, oh, that's your friend. We start talking about friendship. Friendship is so important. And by God's design, it's one of the things that you can actually choose by yourself. 
I know some people, they wish they can choose their parents. It's not that easy. Some people wish they can choose their siblings. Oh, I know some people already pray how I wish I could. But when it comes to friendship, God has given us this ability to choose our friends. Amen. And so you are not going to blame God for your friends. You may complain about your parents to God. You may complain about your siblings to God. But you are not going to complain to God about your friends. Because God is saying, I'm giving you this chance to choose your friends. Amen. And that's what today's message is about. Amen. And Bible has a lot of things to say about friendship. You know, Solomon in his wisdom wrote Proverbs 17, 17. He said, a friend loves at all times. Amen. Did you hear that? How many times? All, all times. times. A, a brother is born for a time of adversity. Hmm. But wait a minute. If you continue to read the same book, and by the time you get to chapter 18, you will see a twist. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to what? Ruin. Ruin. But there is a friend who stays closer than a brother. brother. Amen. There is a very common quote that you will be the same as you are now with the exception of the influence of the books you read and the friends you keep next year. You see, friendship is so important that some of us, when we get to heaven, it will be because of the commitment of our friends. Unfortunately, some people we miss heaven just because of their friends. And I like this, Mike Mudok made this statement. He said, when Satan wants to keep people away from God or from heaven, he puts in their lives friends. Did you hear that? Yes. When Satan wants to destroy people, he puts in their lives friends. And when God wants to bless people, what does he do? He puts friends in their lives. Amen. Now, if you are following that statement, that tells me something. <laughs> that means you need the wisdom, you need the designing spirit to know which one you got. Did you get the good friend or did you get the bad one? You see, in the Bible, there are so many good examples of what friendship is all about. A very common one is David and who? Yeah, you are good Bible students. David and Jonathan. Jonathan did not even think about becoming the king. For the sake of friendship, he was protecting his friend David. That's friendship. And in case you've read New Testament very well, there's this couple, Achille and Priscilla. They made friends with Apollo, and they preached. And because of them, Apollo received Christ. Amen. Some people will make it to heaven because of the commitment of their friends. And some people will miss heaven because their friends are turning them away from Christ. I want to ask you some questions. And the very first one is, if you want to have a friend, what kind of qualities would you like to see in your friend? And I want answers now. What kind of qualities would you like to see in your friend? You can, you can just raise your hand and just tell us. Trustworthy. Thank you. God-fearing. Honest. Thank you. Cheerful. Thank you. Non-judgmental. 
Thanks. Thank you very much. Kindness. Hi. A friend of excellence and integrity. Excellence and integrity. Oh my goodness. Brothers and sisters, when we are looking for friends, we know the qualities we want. Okay, you're going to have to pay attention to this. This is what Jesus said. I didn't say it. Jesus said, Therefore, all things, whatsoever you want men to do what? To do to you. You go and do those things. Amen. Maybe you still don't understand what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying, if you want a caring friend, go and be a caring friend. Amen. If you want a trustworthy friend, go and be a trustworthy friend. Amen. If you want a faithful friend, go and be a faithful friend. Amen. Jesus is turning it on us. Jesus is saying, go and make a list of all the things you want your friends to be. Make it look nice and pretty, and then put it in front of you, and go and be that person. Amen. Ah, oh, yeah, I didn't hear that. Amen. 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 Because that sounds difficult. Amen. And what you will see in this statement is that Jesus is not promising us that he will return the same to us. Jesus is just telling you, and he's just telling me, just go and do it. Go and be that person that you want your friends to be to you. Amen. And I know it's getting more and more difficult now. You see, we are living in a time that's really difficult to our friends. We have tried so many things in order to keep up friendship. You know, if I ask you how many friends do you have, I know some of you will go to your phone, you try to scroll down, even while we are still talking in the sanctuary, some of you may have to quickly try to log on to your Facebook and see how many you have right now. That's the time we are living in. And I want to tell you this morning that in our effort to connect, we are disconnected. Let me say it again, brothers and sisters. In our effort to connect, we are disconnected. In our effort to connect to friends, we are disconnecting from Jesus and we are disconnecting from real friends. You see, technology and social media were just supposed to be tools that would help us in our relationship. Unfortunately, technology and social media are now becoming alternatives to friendship. Let me ask you this. If you have a problem, if you have a situation, what is the first thing you will do? Okay. I'm beginning to get some honest answer. Somebody say, I will go to my phone, I will search, I will put it on Facebook, and say, does anybody know the answer? Brothers and sisters, this is dangerous. Because this is keeping us away from the design of God concerning friendship. Let me say it again. Technology is a tool to help us after we have already established friendship. I need to talk to Brian. I have not seen him and I want to get to him. I can send him a text. I can call him. People are living in the world of technology and social media and they don't even know who they're talking to. I was sharing part of this message with somebody at work during this week and I said, how many friends do you have? And he didn't know the answer. He quickly took out his phone, he checked it out. He said, right now, I have 1,215 friends. <laughs> and I said, how many of them prayed for you yesterday? <laughs> That's the problem. That's the problem. When you have friends, that cannot disconnect to connect you with Jesus, you are in trouble. And if you have opened your Bible to the text that we just read today, 
you will realize that there's something about friendship that is more than saying, I like you, I dislike you on Facebook. There has to be a debt to friendship before you can say somebody's your friend. And so I want to put it to you this morning. If you already have some friends, maybe this is a good time to do some evaluation. And if you are planning to have some friends, maybe this is a good time to do some evaluation. I'm not asking you to go and delete the names of all your friends. I'm just telling you that you should not deceive yourself that you have 20 friends when you actually have none. And I want to tell you that if, if we really, really have in the kind of friendship, you should be able to say, I have a friend. You should be sure. And so I have five questions that can help you. And before we go to these questions, I want to say that these questions were put together on the assumption that you are already a Christian. Let me say it again. These questions were put together, I put them together because my assumption is you are already a believer. Because if you are not a believer, if you have not actually chosen Jesus Christ as your friend, then that should be the first question. Are you yourself in Christ? Is Christ number one in your life? Now let's go to the question. Question number one. Does Jesus Christ occupy the very first place in this person's life? You don't have to tell me. You know it. If the answer is no, can I help? And how can I help? Brothers and sisters, do not deceive your friends who are unbelievers to think everything is okay. You want me to say that again? If you have friends that are unbelievers, do not deceive them to believe everything is okay with them. Because that's not true friendship. If the unbelievers find something outside, they will tell you about how good it is. If you have found Christ to be good, then your friends should also know that Christ is good. Amen. Now let's go to question number two. Question number two is how about feeling. When you are with your friends, how do you feel? Do you feel closer to God or do you feel farther away from Him? Are you tempted to do evil or you are always encouraged to do good? Do you feel like praying? Do you even feel like reading your Bible? Or do you feel like not going to church? Either way. Does it make you feel more passionate about Christ? Again, it's just a time of assessment. It's just for us to see where we are in our friendship. Let's go to number three. I like to play with my friends. But when we do recreational activities or we go out, what do we do together? Are those activities all to me or they're just, they're just there? Do they really align with my goals in life? You see, when we begin to ask ourselves these questions, then we have a deeper understanding of the kind of friends we have. And there's another question here. What do we talk about? Oh, what do we talk about? Do we talk about other people? And let me warn you about this. If you have a friend that they are always talking about other people and how they are not doing well, you need to be very careful. Because this same friend is going to talk about you to another friend about you are not doing well. What do you talk about when you are with your friend? You always talk about how things are so bad that there is no hope. <laughs> or do you always say, well, things are bad. Things are not going well, but there is hope. Amen. Amen. Oh. When you are with your friend, how do you act? Some of us, we know how to pretend very well. <laughs> when you are with friend A, you will pretend and everything will be fine with him or her. Then you go to friend B, then you realize, oh, ah, no, this is different now. Then you pretend again, you are someone else, 
when you are with another friend? How are you when you are with your friend? If you are with your friend and you feel like crying, will you cry? If you are with your friend and you are so sad and you really want to cry, will you cry? Some of us will not cry because you know your friend will make fun of you. Your friend will think you are not really cool. Are you yourself when you are with your friend? And the last one. Is this friendship really valuable to me? And this is a question I have to tell you. This is one of the questions that I really do along in my life a lot because you know some friendship you just have it, you just get by, you know, it's just the easiest one for you to have. It's kind of convenient, you know, we go to the same church, I mean, they live nearby, it's okay, there's no problem. <laughs> but the problem is this, when you keep such friendship, you realize that they're actually draining you. <laughs> you know, the time that you have, you're not spending it well with them. That's why we have the last question. Brothers and sisters, we need to make assessment of our friendship. And if you want to make good assessment of your friendship, the best story to go to in the Bible is in Mark 2, the passage that we read. In Mark 2, verses 1 to 12, and I thank you for reading it to us very well. You will see the story of a paralytic man and his what? Friend. His friends. And when you finish reading that story, I don't want you to put your Bible away. Again, away. I want you to go back and read the story again and again and again. That's what I did. And when I read the story over and over again, I saw something that really touched my heart. Because in the story of the paralytic man, I saw seven people. I saw seven people or seven groups of people. And I want you to pay attention to these people. The first person that I saw in that story is Jesus. And I want to tell you that story will be meaningless without Jesus. Amen. Let me say it again. The story of the paralytic man and his friends will be meaningless. In fact, it will be like a comedy without Christ. Amen. Because think about it. If they just make the hole and they put him down and nothing happened, and it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> and I want to tell you, your friendship is meaningless without Jesus. Amen. 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 Some of us, we like to give good advice to our friends. See what Jesus Christ did to this man. Jesus Christ did not only heal this man physically. Jesus Christ healed this man spiritually. Jesus Christ healed this man emotionally. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only one that can provide your spiritual, your physical, and your emotional solution. Amen. This is what I've learned in relating to people that I call my good friends. When I call them and I say, this is what's going on. You know the first thing they will tell me? Let's pray. Let us pray. Amen. Amen. Or sometimes they will say, continue, but I'm praying with you as you are saying. Sometimes we don't have the time to stop and pray, but they say, keep saying, keep talking to me, I'm praying as you're talking. Because they know that the solution to every problem is in Christ. Amen. If you read Mark chapter 2, you will see that the only solution is actually in Christ. Amen. So I see Jesus in the story. Who else do I see in the story? Of course, I see the paralytic man. And this paralytic man, actually, I feel so associated with this man. Because this man wanted to go to Jesus. I don't want you to assume that this man was born dude and was forced to go to Jesus. This man really wanted to go to Jesus, but he did not know how. And I feel like that. This man has been paralyzed physically. This man has been paralyzed spiritually. This man has been paralyzed emotionally. And this man just 
needed a friend. This man needed somebody to take him to Jesus. And brothers and sisters, oh my. That man, I really feel, I feel like I'm this man. Because sometimes, you just don't seem to have enough strength to handle what's going on in your life. And then you just wish that there is somebody somewhere that will be praying with you. Amen. Sometimes you are on your knees and in your mind you just wish there is somebody that also pray with you. I can feel, I can associate with this paralytic man. And you know, let's go to the next one. His friends. I also see his friends. How many are they? How many friends in the story? Four friends. Those are the ones that carried him. You know, do you know the names of these friends? Were their names mentioned? Was there any part in the story that the friends were saying, look at us, we did it? You know, we helped him. We are the friends. Did you see that in the story? Brothers and sisters, if you are going to listen to this story and read it over and over again, you will see what friendship is all about. Amen. It's not about saying, I did it for him. Hmm. It's not about I led him to Christ or I gave him this or I gave him that. Hmm. These friends were so happy for what Jesus had done. Amen. They were not pointing to themselves. Amen. Their names were not mentioned. Hmm. They only gave the glory to who? To God. Amen. When you, be, when you begin to give all the glory to God in your friendship, then you are getting there. Amen. The next group of people will be the crowd. If you read the story, the only reason this man could not go in directly was because of what? Crowd. Because of the crowd. The crowd were blocking him. And so, I say the crowd. And I want to ask you, do you think you belong to the crowd? Do you block others from seeing Jesus? Even though you yourself, you are not really enjoying any blessing? Crowd. Blocking Jesus. They were listening to Jesus, but it didn't even make any sense to them. It didn't make any difference in their lives. Crowd. They were just there. Just to make up the number. They said the house was full of what? Of crowd. And the next group of people will be who? The Pharisees. Wow. These are the people. They know everything. They believe they know how to handle everything. And even when Jesus Christ performed the healing, instead of them to rejoice with the man, they looked at him and said, no, this cannot be. And I want to tell you, those are the people that when God is blessing you, they will start thinking, how can that happen? We know him. We know her. She just got her degree. She just finished. She just got married. Why is did this try to find the reason for all the blessings in your lives? Those are the Pharisees. They are questioning. They are beginning to question what God has done. Let us go to the next one. His family and friends. If you go to the last verse of the passage that we read, which I hope you are reading, his family and others, they were so happy. What did they do? They started giving glory to God. They said, praise God, we know this man before. He's been part of our family. We know him. He was in trouble, but Jesus Christ has set him free. Amen. Which group do you belong to? Which group do you belong to? Let me tell you the most important group out of this. I've shown you six. I want to show you the seventh group. The seventh group, I would say, are the most privileged group. The most privileged group That will be you and I. Whether you like it or not, you are already in the story. 
you have seen the story right from the beginning to the end. You cannot take yourself outside this story. You cannot pretend as if you don't know this story. You know this story now. The crowd did not see what you are seeing. The paralytic man could not see what you are seeing. The Pharisees, they did not see what you are seeing now. God is giving you the beginning of the story and the end of the story. The question is, what will you do about it? What do you want to do about this story? Remember what Jesus Christ said? He said, go and do unto others what you will want them to do unto me. Unto you. you. Amen. So the message this morning is very simple. Let's go and make friends. And when we want to make friends, let's make friends in the way that we glorify God. Amen. And if you want to make friends, I want to tell you where it all starts from. Jesus Christ said this himself. He said, look, I make myself your friend. And that's why we call Jesus our good person. Amen. Jesus Christ, look unto us. I'm going to read John 15. In John chapter 15, verses 12 to 15, he said this. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Amen. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for his one's friends. friends. Amen. When Jesus Christ was laying down his life, he was calling you and he was calling me friends. And he went forward, he said, emphatically, he said, you are my friends. If you love one another. If you do what I command you. Yes. And what Jesus Christ is commanding us this morning is to turn around those things that we want our friends to be and then go out and be those things to our friends. Amen. I hope somebody in this congregation is already thinking how they will be a faithful friend this year. You know, at the beginning of this year, it's always good to make resolution. So I want to encourage you this year. Let's our, let our goal be that we're going to be faithful to our friends. And I put together an approach that can help us. In order for us to be faithful, faith has to be the center of it. There's nothing like being faithful without faith. And that's why you need to know the basis of your friendship. That's what the faith is all about. Next one is appreciation. You cannot be a faithful friend if you don't appreciate your friends. You know, as difficult as it is for us to have good friends, we still have some good friends. And I want to encourage you this year, if you have not been paying attention to your good friends, pay attention to them this year. Call them. Say thank you to them. Tell them how much you appreciate them. Appreciation is so important in our friendship. The next thing is being intentional. Some of us, we are not intentional enough when it comes to friendship. We need to start doing things intentionally. The other thing is we need to build trust. We need to be honest. You said, be open, be real with your friends. Stop pretending with you are with your friends. The next one is forbearance. This is where many of us, this is where we struggle. We have friends, we find it difficult to forgive them when they do something against us. Forbearance leads, helps us to forgive people. And the next one is understanding. We need to share a lot of understanding our friendship. But the most important thing of all in our attempts to be faithful to our friends and the calling that God has given us is for us to express true love. Amen. Amen. And so this morning, the call is for us. 
into commitment again. Amen. That in 2013, what will happen if you give a gift of friendship to somebody? And if you already have good friends, celebrate your friendship and continue to grow stronger. Amen. And as we close, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sing a song that talks about the friendship of Jesus Christ. This song is so important because unless we understand the friendship of Jesus Christ, we cannot understand true friendship. And so while we're still seated, I want us to take our hymn book and just turn to hymn number 186.